are going to have faith because of your faith. Amen. There are going to be people, they don't have faith of their own, but because of your faith, they're going to be healed. They're going to be blessed. They're going to receive. Right, is this talking to somebody? I mean, we've, we'll the end, dear Lord. And we've got to come to a place where we realize whether or not we are even of the faith. And honestly, this is where we are here in New Buffalo. Once again, we, are, we have to look at ourselves in the mirror and we have to be able to say, Lord, am I even of the faith? Faith for what? Faith to believe what? Faith, faith to follow, faith to obey. And, and sometimes maybe it, it, it's true. I, and I, I wrestle with this. Listen, as, I'll just say this. As a Christian leader, boy, oh boy, I'm going to get shot for that one. But here's the thing. The Lord spoke to me again. Reminded me, number one, you can't save anybody. It's not your job. It's not your position. You lead them to, listen, you, watch this, you partner up with the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, and, listen, and partner up with the Holy Spirit and Jesus, and we'll do the rest. Yeah. But notice it's partner up with. I mean, it's almost as if he said, well, you have faith in my Son and my Spirit again. But if we partner together, would you have faith? Mm. Somebody let that sink in for a second. And then go to those people who are without, without what? Without many things. Some are without faith. Some are without hope. Some are without help. And sometimes we want to give help that they, it's not the help that they really need, but it seems like they need. So that's one of the reasons, like even today, you know, we're going to, later on today, we're going to take up a love offering because how many of you believe that uh, when Brother Gary gets home, he might want to eat, amen? Yes. But in the meantime, you know, let's just pray right now because I want to get to a place where we can, where you are ready to receive what God has given to me. And, and I have to say this, I have never preached this message before, but I have preached something like it in the past. Only today it has a little different twist to it, a little different slant, maybe a different shade of something. And I hope that whatever that shade is, is it gets through your rose-colored glasses and you can see clearly what the will of God is. Because can I tell you today that the plan of God still works today? Amen. Amen. Turn your name and say it. Listen. God's plan still works today. If we would just follow this plan. Father, we thank you this morning that you have brought us here together. Lord, we thank you, God, for uh, Lord, the medium of technology where we can send this message out far and wide. Lord, we thank you all the more for those who come to hear it in person, live and in person. Lord, we ask today, Lord, that this message becomes something that is live. And personal, something God that, that will uh, inspire, something Lord that will prick some hearts, something Lord that will cause some to be convicted, something Lord that some will be encouraged, and some Lord that will, they'll hear this message today and they'll say, you know, I need to change how I see things. Lord, help me, help me with my belief. And maybe Lord, there are some who say, Lord, help me with my Unbelief. Lord, help me to trust you more. Help me to come to a place where, as we sang the song just a moment ago, that I might better be able to stay on the fiery line. Because I want to I wanna be on that front line. Not just for myself, because, Father, I believe today that you can, Lord, that you can move mountains. But, Lord, it's my faith. If I have faith in the mustard seed. Lord, today we ask that you would overcome these obstacles. Lord, today we pray, Lord, we have a list on the back of our bulletin today, Lord, for a young family that will be joining us next week, Lord, and as we minister to them and to their children. And, and Lord, we pray, pray today, God, for uh, uh, Christina and Derek, Lord, for their new child. And, and Lord, we pray for the, for the Feta family, both near and far. Uh, Lord, those who are here, those who are, are down south, those who are farther south and west, Lord, we pray for the entire family. And Lord, for the mass in, the, in Goshen, Indiana, and Lord, for Sister Robin for continued he healing. And Lord, for my own daughters, uh, uh, Lord, for my daughter Brittany, Lord, who is great with child. I, I will say, Lord, she's getting pretty big. Lord, any moment now, we're about to be blessed. And Lord, we thank you, God, even now, as we pray for continual health and healing for Brother Tom all the way out on the West Coast. And we thank you, God, that we've heard a praise report, that God, that there's been a turn in his condition, and that, Lord, we're believing right now that, God, that you're going to heal him, you're going to restore him to good health, and, Lord, that you'll give him many more years to come. And, Lord, for those that are here this morning, help us, Lord, to fix our eyes upon you. Lord, as you spoke to us last week, that we're fixing our eyes 
on the author and the finisher of our faith. Our, the, heart, the, the eyes of our heart be opened, that you might be able to speak to us. The eyes of our heart be opened, that we might see the word and do the word. In Jesus' name, and the church all said, Amen. Amen, amen. I want to share something this week. Uh, and it's, well, part of our vision statement is that um, we are to be spiritual parents. You may have never given birth to a child. You may have never had sired a child. In, in the, I'll just say, in the natural sense. But did you know that we can birth spiritual children? And I'm, I'm afraid that some of us may have done better than others. Uh, matter of fact, I wrestle with myself because I wonder, was I really that good of a dad? Was I really that good of a father? And just to be clear, wherever you are right now in your parenting uh, process, maybe maybe you're here today and all your kids are grown and moved off, their kids are grown, I mean, all that. And maybe you've never had any children of your own, but I'm here to tell you, yes, you have, if you would just open the eyes of your heart and let God speak to you. And listen, realize something, that you can have children. Amen? Amen. Amen? In a real sense, not just a spiritual sense, in a real sense, because through the Spirit, people are birthed into your life. And you'll get the chance to tend to somebody and see them grow up in the faith. Amen? Amen. So this, uh, this week, I was reading a part of the book, on, uh, and it was a book about the Christian home. Uh, and there was a chapter that discussed seven goals uh, for Christian parents, and and I, I found this list pretty suggestive. And so in the interest of time, I want to keep with my manuscript this morning. I spent a little time putting it together, so I guess I'll use it. Uh, so I decided I would spend this morning. And actually, let me give you the, the, those, those, uh, uh, those principles, the, the suggestions right now. Uh, number one, this, this is what that, that we have wanted to accomplish in raising children. Here it is. Ready? To lead them to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. To lead them to total commitment of their lives to Christ. Amen. To build the word of God into their lives. Amen. To teach them prompt and cheerful obedience and respect for authority. Amen. To teach them self-discipline and to teach them to accept responsibility. Amen. To teach them the basic traits of a Christian character such as love, faithfulness, integrity, zeal, patience, and joy. Amen. Now, don't worry. If you didn't get them all written down, I'll give them to you again later. But these were the goals that we had. This is what we wanted to accomplish in raising children. You see, as parents, we want to move our children from dependence to independence. Before I go any further, let's turn to the Word of God. Amen? Because I'll come back and I'm going to pick up with what I just said. Because here Paul is writing to the church at Thessalonica. And here is what he says. He's talking first about himself in chapter 2. Listen to what he says, brothers and sisters. For you know yourselves, brethren, that our coming to you was not in vain, but even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at Philippi, as you know, we were bold in our God to speak to you the gospel of God in much conflict. For our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanliness, nor was it in deceit. But as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing men, but God who tests our hearts. For neither at any time did we use flattering words, as you know, nor a cloak of covetousness. God is witness. Nor did we seek glory from men, either from you or from others, when we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But here's where it begins, right here. Verse 7. But we were gentle among you, just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children. Verse 8. So affectionately longing for you, we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives. Because you had become dear to us. For you remember, brethren, our labor and toil for laboring night and day. That we might not be a burden to any of you. We preach to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses and God also. How 
devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believed. 